We are a few months into the new school year, not so new anymore, and I thought it was time for an update and an overview slash review of the curriculum I am using this year, the main curriculum I am using and loving. I'll just say it right now, we are loving it, which is the Heart of Dakota Little Hearts for His Glory curriculum. Now, I'm not doing a ton of homeschooling content on my channel, but especially because this is a lesser known curriculum and I absolutely love it and I chose this after spending hours and hours and hours of researching and now after using it we absolutely love it i really want to spread the news about this curriculum because i think it is great this is in no way affiliated or sponsored they don't know who i am i have paid for everything with our own money but i just thought i would give you guys a really detailed overview of what this curriculum is like even if you have older kids um, they have curriculum all the way up through 12th grade so I thought it would be interesting to share and helpful as well to share a very detailed overview of what this curriculum looks like, what the books are, what the day-to-day -day looks like, how much time it takes, and everything like that. So buckle up. It's probably going to be a long ride, but I'm trying to be as thorough as possible to help you guys make a good decision. Um, and if you don't homeschool, I hope you watch this video and get inspired that you totally could do this. You totally could do this. I am making it work as a working mom with a crazy busy husband, three little kids. Is it easy every day? No, but I'm absolutely loving it overall and I wanna share that this curriculum is a huge reason why. So let's just jump right in. So if you're not familiar, Heart of Dakota is an amazing curriculum that is created by and run by a family business. Um, Carrie Austin is the one who initially created this curriculum. She is is was a homeschooling mom and she was with a group of friends who were just inspired by how she's able to take literature and pull out so much from it pull out historical facts pull out biblical traits character traits and just so many different things from literature and really base a curriculum around that so she ended up creating drawn into the heart of reading which is a like sub curriculum within heart of dakota once you get, I think, to like second grade and above and you're reading more proficiently. But she also went on to then create curriculum that are all based on history. For the most part, they are based on history, but they go through all of the different subjects as I will explain, but everything's really woven together. And it starts at preschool all the way up to 12th grade. So there's 13 different curriculum choices you can pick from and they are all from what i have seen very very good but obviously this is my first year using it so i can only really speak to the program i've used but i cannot wait to continue every year so you can order a catalog and look through it it is super detailed as you will see every single year has a few pages going over it so you know exactly what you're getting you see all of the books and choices they have a lot of the curriculum if there's book sets you can pick your own or they have sets for girls for boys like a more classical set so you can kind of pick and choose what you like based on what your children are interested in or what you want them to be reading and so i just love that there's a lot of choices within this and i love that once i buy it for one year i have it for my next child so while it is slightly more expensive than some programs because you are buying a lot of books it absolutely is a lot less expensive than others i looked at and you can reuse it every single year that your child is in that grade and a lot of it is just really really great stuff because you're not actually writing in most of the stuff that you get so you can use it over and over every year every single one of the curriculum guides as far as i have seen are very open and go with a very similar layout that is super simple to look at and know exactly what you need to do which was a huge draw for me to pick this curriculum because i looked at so many sample pages of curriculum books in other curriculums and i just found them very hard to wrap my head around and especially when you have kids running around you want to be able to look at it and know exactly what you need to do um, otherwise what's the point of having like a whole box curriculum if you have no idea how to use it or it's really hard to figure out what you're doing not just for the day but for each part of the day so I absolutely love how they have it laid out it's super visually pleasing and easy to find everything which was a huge bonus for me and it also is very hands-on a very gentle approach especially at the younger ages it's very Charlotte Mason a lot of literature and 
you know, looking at beauty and experiencing beauty and just using stuff around the house so it's not too complicated. You don't need a lot of like extra stuff for science and things like that. It's just very simple but thorough and just what you need. Like there's no fluff in this curriculum, which I really appreciate. And then it's also definitely a Christian curriculum. It has the Bible infused in everything you do, which I absolutely love. And it is literature based. So you're reading a lot of literature. It's not overwhelming, at least not at the younger ages, but it's like the perfect amount and you're learning through really good literature, lots of different things, not just like literary devices and genres, but you're also learning character traits and right from wrong, good and evil, that kind of stuff, which I really appreciate that being in the literature. They also have amazing customer service, so if you were to look into this curriculum, you could call and get one-on-one -on -one tailored help for where to place your child and advice on different choices to make within each curriculum package, which I think is amazing. And then on top of that, there's an amazing community. So while Heart of Dakota is not like a super well-known curriculum, the community it has is very strong and the people within that are always so willing to help. So there are Facebook groups, there's like a broad Facebook group for the whole curriculum um, across the board, all of them. And then there's specific Facebook groups for each guide. And so they have files in there that are free that I've used. They have, you know, tailored help, lots of advice, um, just amazing community to help guide you along as well, which I really, really love. So I chose Little Hearts for His Glory, which is the curriculum for ages five to seven. My daughter is six in first grade, so she's right in the middle of ages for this curriculum, and I chose that for multiple reasons. First of all, this is our first year homeschooling, so I didn't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. I wanted it to be pretty gentle, which this definitely is, without being too easy. It's gentle, but not overly easy, if that makes sense. Like the read aloud stories are pretty advanced and we made the adjustments for handwriting and logic and critical thinking, science, all of those. You can choose like an upper level for all of those for first grade. So. You don't have to do the kindergarten choices for that. You can pick it a little more advanced. And then definitely the Bible storybook we're using is a lot more advanced for her age than it would have been, you know, it probably would have been too advanced for her last year, but it's perfect for her this year. It's a challenge, but not too challenging with the vocabulary and things like that. So I find it a perfect sweet spot for us. And I also chose it because a lot of moms who have been through all of the Heart of Dakota curriculum books have said that once they get to preparing, preparing hearts for his glory, which is, could be third or fourth grade, they say that third graders are often a little too young for the skills needed for that guide. And so it's best if you can start um, first grade with little hearts for his glory, and then you'll be in preparing for fourth grade. So that's also why I chose this. So we wouldn't um, be getting too far ahead of ourselves, but not, you know, developmentally ready for some of those skills they need at the higher levels. It is a 34 unit curriculum book, which has five days per unit. So each unit is about a week. I usually do it in four days. You can make adjustments. We just double up on one of the boxes that I will show you in a second every single day so that we get through all of the week in just four days instead of five. And like I said, there are tons of different choices you can make to make it more difficult for your child or a little bit easier depending on where they're at, which is really, really helpful. So let's jump into the curriculum guide. Now it does not come like this. It comes bound, um, but I unbound it and put it in sheet protectors so I could use it over and over and I have a whole system to put these each, you know, a few weeks worth in a daily weekly binder, which I have a video on if you guys are interested. You can do that with pretty much any curriculum, but this is what it looks like. And as you can see, it has an amazing spread. Everything is very visually pleasing. It's easy to see exactly what you need to do. Um, everything's color coded now. They've started doing that. There's little icons for each box. Every box is pretty much the same every day, except there's a couple rotating boxes. Um, like this box right here will go from like thinking games, there's dramatic play, and then there's art. Um, and science so those rotate but pretty much everything else is the same and it's a two-page spread so it's super easy to just look at it and know exactly what you need to do um, you don't have to spend a lot of time figuring that out which I really appreciate 
There are also things in the appendix that make it really simple, like the words to the rhymes in motion, which I will share about in a second. There are um, changes, like if you pick a more difficult level of math or what have you, they have the different page numbers and things you need to do in the back to supplement. Okay, like I said, history is a huge part of this curriculum. It's basically what kind of groups everything together. It brings all of the different subjects together. And so let's look at what we use for history. So we use this little, or History for Little Pilgrims, which is a really cute history book with a Christian outlook, I guess you could say. There's definitely, um, creation is from a Christian standpoint. There's a lot of the biblical um, people from the Bible in here and so you kind of go between this and some other books so we've used this a lot and it talks about time and how time is measured and things like that and then it gets into the different people that were influential in history and how God created the world and things like that and right now in November we have been reading a lot of this 101 favorite stories from the Bible which is the first grade choice which is definitely more advanced, which I really like. So there's usually a page of a story, a picture, and then there's um, some questions you can ask your child for comprehension purposes. But the language level, I would say, is more advanced for this. Um, I read it to my four-year-old as well, but it's a little more over her head, whereas my six-year-old, it's a challenge, but it's not too hard. I love the pictures. I love the stories. It's just like the perfect amount. We usually read one and sometimes it's listed to read two in a day, but never more than that. So um, we're all the way to page 104 right now. Um, we are not yet to Jesus, so we're still in the Old Testament. And then we have not done a lot with this book yet, but this is History Stories for Children, so I'm sure this will be incorporated as well. So it's a lot of the same stories, but just kind of a little bit more expanded upon in a liter literary sense. like. Um, but there's also comprehension questions, and if you want to do an extension activity, it's in there. Um, so those three kind of all work together. And then to supplement, what I like to do with that is we have coloring sheets that we do every week. I found that in the Facebook group for Little Hearts for His Glory, and a mom, I think, just made those. And so I print those out for free, and I have my girls color them whenever we get to whatever story it is that goes along with that. And then we also, in the same group, I found some timeline cards. So whenever we get to an important person or important event in the hist historical timeline, I have them color that and then we put it up on a board so we can kind of visually see the timeline because there are so many stories and so many people, especially in the Old Testament, that kind of you can get jumbled up and forget how they're all connected. So that really helps us as well. And then to go along with that, there are dramatic play and art projects that go along with the curriculum that are just things you probably already have on hand. I will be honest, we don't really do a whole lot of those because we also are doing classical conversations. Um, so I kind of leave that for our history and our art and things like that. And we just throw in our own art projects here and there. But that is definitely something you can do that's very easy and fun. They're very simple things like I know for the day when you are learning about creation, it says um, God created light um, for day and darkness for night. And so they have you like shut off all the lights and use a flashlight. So it's it's stuff that's very easy to do. It's very fun for, you know, five, six and seven year olds, but very simple and easy for the parent to do without needing a lot of extra things. Next up is Bible and music. So this is a huge part of the curriculum because it is a Christian curriculum. And this is something I really love. So. I had never heard of this CD. I know some people have, but it's called Hide Him in Your Heart with Steve Green. This is volume one. So we use this to memorize scripture verses. So every week we have a different scripture verse that the curriculum outlines that we need to learn. And so this is what we usually do right away. It has you repeat it in different ways. Sometimes they have a fun activity to help you, you know, get up and moving while you're learning the verse. Um, for those kinesthetic learners and then you listen to a song that goes along with the verse and that really helps us all memorize the verse because when you put something to music it's so much easier to remember it so I love this CD and then what I did also in that Facebook group is just printed off some of these verse cards so that we have something to look at and then a lot of weeks every like four weeks or so or six weeks you go back and review and so i just keep them all on here so we can review at any time 
And then from time to time, we also read out of this Devotions for the Children's Hour, which you're not reading this and some of the other books you're not reading front to back. Um, some of them you're just jumping around because it fits with the other stuff. So for example, this one, we have not read in order. They have us jump to a certain devotion that fits with whatever's happening in the history. So that like, if they're talking about lying, like somebody in the Bible lied, we would read a devotion about lying and tie them all together, which I think is really, really cool and something that takes so much time to piece that all together that I really, really appreciate about this curriculum so we can just dive really deep into these topics and I don't have to spend all the time figuring out, okay, where's the devotion that talks about this? And they've done it all for me, which I really love. Next up is the read aloud. So normally how we structure it for us is we do the Bible verse, we try to do the Pledge of Allegiance, prayer, and then I will usually do language arts first just because it's a big struggle for my six-year-old. She fights me on it and so we do that first to get it done with. Um, once that's done then I let my two older daughters grab something to do to keep their hands busy and that's when we will do our history slash bible books and anything we're reading basically we will do that then so we will do those that we're reading if we have to read our history book our bible book um our devotional we will read those then and then we will read our storybook which is usually just one chapter which is about three pages so it's not a whole lot of reading maybe 20 minutes um but just enough for that age range to sit um and listen without you know needing to get up and moving so most of the books that come with this curriculum are the thornton burgess books so um there's the adventures of reddy fox Right now, we are currently reading The Adventures of Peter Cottontail, The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse, The Adventures of Buster Bear, The Adventures of Jerry Muskrat, The Adventures of Chatterer the Red Squirrel, The Adventures of Grandfather Frog, and then there is um, 12 different Beatrix Potter stories, so Peter Rabbit, as well as 11 others. Um, like The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin, The Tale of Benjamin Bunny, The Tale of Mr. Jeremy Fisher, The Tale of Tom Kitten, and so on and so forth. So very classic stories for kids that teach a lot of lessons that have language that is a little more advanced than they'd be hearing because it is older, which I really like. And they're short enough that they pack a lot of humor and lessons into one chapter but it's especially with the language it's not so hard and they're not getting frustrated so i personally think these are perfect choices but like if your kid read one and they got really sick of the style you can definitely pick something else nothing else in the curriculum is really tied to the stories but they are really really great if you if your kid likes them my kids really like them we think they're hilarious we love the characters um, I printed out a map from that facebook group that kind of shows us where everything is in the thornton burgess you know, made up world. And so we can kind of keep all the characters straight there, but it's just really, really fun and cute, lighthearted, but lots of great lessons um, so far about humility and pride and um, lying, tricking people and not paying attention. Like there's so many good lessons in there that we can connect to our everyday life. So I love them. There also is a part of the curriculum called Rhymes in Motion, where you're basically like standing up, you're doing movements, two different words that you know fit with the history to help really tie that home so like there's uh the plague so like when moses is telling the pharaoh you know we want to get out of here out of egypt and then the plagues happen there's like a rhymes in motion to go along with the plagues to help the kids learn the plagues we personally have not been doing this um i think it's really fun i just haven't included it but i think it's a great thing to add i think it's great for kids but we're doing so much memory work with our classical conversations with songs and stuff that I'm trying not to get my kids confused with all the different songs. So we have been skipping that, but I think it's a really great addition to the program. Along with this curriculum is also handwriting. So there's a kindergarten level handwriting and then we have handwriting manuscript A. So basically, um, I think it's like two or three times a week your kid is practicing their handwriting. I just do it five days a week we got behind and so now we're just doing one a day just um one sheet so we should get through it in plenty of time but basically your child is just repeating you know writing different things over and over again practicing spelling practicing 
copy work, practicing, you know, handwriting so that they're getting better with their handwriting. And as they go on, there's longer words and verses and things like that to copy, but pretty straightforward handwriting. And then there are also these critical thinking books. So there is a first, there's a kindergarten option and we chose the first grade option. So, so far we've been in this going on eagerly book, which kids think are really fun. Like I just think this book is really fun, but it's teaching them skills while they work on it. And what we do with these is I save these for nap time. So my child isn't doing a ton of seat work at one time. We save these for nap time when her little sisters are resting and she does these then and it probably takes her 15 minutes to do both. Like they don't take a long time, but you know, I'm trying to spread out the seat work for her. So basically in here are a lot of like matching, following directions, um, patterns. Let's see. Um, kind of seeing how things fit together. So like logic and thinking, counting, tracing, and yeah, just a lot of that kind of stuff, like just getting their critical thinking skills working and, and still practicing some fine motor in there as well. And the just thinking and choosing is a little bit more like real world. So it'll say like, what shall I do next? So you're trying to match like the order of things, talking about what happened first, what came next, what things belong in each group, like how is it used, just different things like that. So it's a lot of logic, critical thinking, which let's just say it's something I don't feel like we got a lot in the public school last year, which obviously it was a very crazy year, 2020. Um, but I think it's definitely a huge reason why I wanted to homeschool is to really build those critical thinking skills starting at a young age. And that's how you start is just very simply. Um, but you can build on that as time goes on. And then lastly, for like the core curriculum, there is science. Like I said, we've just been doing this at Classical Conversations, but this is the first grade book. It's Our Father's World. So this also, from what I've seen, they kind of like pull different lessons to fit with what you're learning about in history. So you're not going through this page by page, you're kind of picking and choosing, um, but it's very colorful, lots of things to learn in here. I mean, we really should be doing this because I think it'd be really fun and educational, but um, you can only do so much. So we're picking and choosing this year, but I think this would be a really, really good, simple, but helpful resource. And then for math and reading, there are lots of options they give you, but we personally have gone with the good and the beautiful, which they don't even talk about on their website because they're not affiliated in any way. But if you are looking to just stick with the heart of Dakota and everything they offer, the choices for math are Singapore math and the essentials kindergarten primary mathematics for first grade. Um, I don't really know a lot about that one, but there are a couple of math choices that you can buy like directly with your box of everything else. So throw those in there as well and any resources that come with those. And then for language arts, they have the reading lesson, reading made easy and sound bites reading, which are for the younger ages. They may have different choices as they get older, but those are like the main phonics reading writing programs for these ages. But like I said, we use the good and the beautiful, which we've been loving personally. And I love that we don't have to stick with everything with the heart of Dakota because those things don't really fit with the rest. So if you're doing a different language arts, if you're doing a different math, that's totally okay because those things you have to build on the skills. So they're not like pulling different math problems to fit with history or anything. They're pretty much totally separate. So it's okay if you use something totally different for that. Okay, so what do we love about this curriculum? I think I've sung my praises as I've been showing you all of this, but we love so many things. I honestly cannot tell you one thing we don't love about it. Um, maybe just the picture on the cover, but honestly, if you can get over that, there's just so much value in this curriculum. I love how open and go it is, but how enriching it is. Like it's so thorough. I love how everything's woven together and it feels like a mom spent a ton of time finding different resources and figuring out how they can go together, which is exactly what this curriculum is. So even though it is like a boxed curriculum and it's comprehensive and it's open and go, it does not feel rigid or cookie cutter, if that makes sense. It feels very well thought out, very thorough. I love how literature based it is. I love how from a Christian standpoint that the Bible is history. So it's not like we learn Bible and then we learn history. No, 
the Bible is our history. Plus, we learn a lot of things that aren't in the Bible as we get, you know, further along on the timeline. But I love that that is the basis, and I'm teaching my children that, which they obviously would not get in public school, and you know, maybe even some Christian schools they may not get in that way in a history class, which I really, really love. And I just love how gentle certain parts of it are, but how challenging they are in other areas. Not super duper challenging where it's super difficult and frustrating, but like the language is more difficult. So I know my child is learning so much vocabulary just through the read alouds, learning, you know, the structure of sentences and how people speak and things like that through the read alouds and the Bible and things like that. I just think um, kids can handle a lot more than we often throw at them at those young ages, but I love how it's like they're scaffolding around us so that we're not like crashing and burning. The short stories are very short, bite size, but just full of beautiful language, which I am a former English teacher. So that's huge for me. I definitely wanted something very literature based, but some of the other literature based programs I looked at were in extremely overwhelming to be as a first time homeschooling mom. So that is the entire curriculum. I would love to know if you've used it, if you're thinking about using it, if maybe this review and overview convinced you. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Let me know if you're homeschooling, what curriculum you use, and I will see you soon. Bye guys.